Hello and welcome. Today, I would like to show you the new fixed rate money market from Inverse Finance. It's called Firm. First, a few words about Inverse. Inverse Finance is a global community of cryptocurrency product developers organized as a DAO or decentralized autonomous organization. We are building a suite of permissionless and decentralized blockchain tools, including our decentralized stablecoin known as DOLA. Our vision is that by 2040, most goods and services will be paid for using decentralized stablecoins. But to realize that long-term vision, the DeFi industry needs to overcome two very important hurdles. The first is the reliance on variable interest rates for loans. The second is something called cross-collateral asset pools. To address both these hurdles, Inverse invented a new lending protocol called FIRM. FIRM stands for fixed rate market. Let's take a closer look. Variable rate lending is popular in DeFi today, but the total amount of loans using variable interest rates amounts to only a tiny fraction of all the borrowing happening in the traditional finance world. One reason for this is that variable rates can be very unpredictable and volatile. DeFi lending market designs like compound finance usually rely on variable interest rates. Those rates can go up or down depending on the supply of tokens available for borrowing. So if the supply of a token is high, interest rates are usually low because there is more supply than demand. But if the available supply of a token is running low, on the other hand, interest rates can go up. In fact, sometimes variable interest rates can go up a lot, jumping to 10 to 20 times the original borrowing rate. So when you borrow using variable rates, your interest costs can vary a lot, which in turn can affect the health of your loan or even lead to unwanted liquidations. Volatile interest rates are not friendly for borrowers like home buyers or other long-term investors who need predictability in their interest costs. A few projects have tried to offer fixed rate DeFi lending to borrowers, but they usually offer very high interest rates compared to variable lenders. Their maturities are usually short or the rates are not truly really fixed. So if the market has a sharp downturn, those fixed rates can switch to variable rates. Generally speaking, fixed rate loans have not been too popular in DeFi so far. To address the problems with variable rate loans, Inverse invented a new way of borrowing using a new token we call DOLA borrowing rights, also referred to as DBRs. DBRs replace interest rates with something different, borrowing rights. It's a brand new concept, and it means that rather than paying interest on a loan, a borrower instead pays for the right to borrow a token. DBRs are an important innovation for DeFi. So let's take a look at how DBRs work with an example. This is Zelda. She wants to borrow $100 for one year. So she deposits $125 worth of ETH as collateral on Inverse's new lending market firm. Each DBR allows her to borrow $1 for one year. So she buys 100 DBRs. Let's assume that each DBR is priced at 5 cents each, so she spends $5 to buy the DBRs. Purchasing DBRs at 5 cents each, she can be sure that she will never pay more than 5 cents per dollar borrow. That is, her cost of borrowing is fixed at 5% of her loan. Zelda then borrows $100. At the time she takes out her loan, Zelda has $100 in DOLA and $5 in DBRs. So now Zelda has her loan and her cost of borrowing will never change. Because of Zelda's loan, her DBR balance will gradually be consumed. With every hour, her DBR balance decreases by a little bit. Zelda doesn't have to pay any gas costs as her DBR balance changes. She can add more DBRs at any time if she wants to extend her loan for a longer duration or borrow more DOLA. One might ask, what happens if my DBR balance reaches zero and I still have an outstanding loan? You can add DBRs to your wallet at any time. But if you have a loan position and your DBR balance reaches zero, a feature called recharge can be implemented to ensure that your loan remains healthy. It's similar to a late fee. If you have a negative DBR balance and forget to repay your loan or to add more DBRs, 
third parties are incentivized to add DBRs to your wallet for you at a premium during the recharge process. The cost is added to your DOLA debt. More DBRs are added to your wallet continually to keep your loan healthy, but note that they are priced at a premium in order to incentivize healthy borrowing habits. The cost of the additional DBRs are added to your overall DOLA loan amount. If you don't repay your loan or add more DBRs yourself, your DBR balance will continue to trigger recharging and add to the DOLA debt. This can continue until your total loan balance reaches the maximum collateral factor. If you don't repay the loan at that point, your position will be liquidated. So borrow responsibly and keep your loan healthy. Now that you have seen the basic mechanics of DBRs, let's see how DBRs compare to other fixed rate lending options. Most fixed rate DeFi lenders offer only short-term loans with fixed maturity dates. DBRs in contrast have no maturity dates and you can borrow for long durations if you want. Some fixed rate lenders require monthly interest payments. With DBRs, there are no interest payments. Nearly all fixed rate lenders require interest rates that are much, much higher than variable rates. Some well-known DAOs offer fixed rate lending, but volatile market conditions can trigger extreme increases in otherwise fixed rates. And they won't promise to keep the fixed rate forever and may vote to change your rate at any time. So they don't really offer fixed rates. With DBRs, once you lock your borrowing costs, there's no way to raise rates or costs. DBRs let you set the cost for your loan ahead of time with 100% predictability. You can even buy them when the price is low and simply keep them in your wallet until you're ready to borrow, locking in a low interest rate. And you can sell your unused DBR at any time. So if the price of DBR goes up, you can potentially make a profit by selling your excess DBRs. So who should use DBRs for borrowing? Yield farmers. DBRs let yield farmers borrow DOLA at a low and predictable rate over long or short time periods. Real world asset buyers? DBRs help you avoid interest rate surprises for long-term investments into real world assets like a house or a car or maybe college tuition. There also are a series of speculative and arbitrage opportunities with DBRs. You can lock an interest rate, meaning you can buy DBRs at low prices as a hedge if you believe that interest rates will increase in the future. You can lower the cost of hedging your collateral against price drops by borrowing DOLA and purchasing put options for the collateral. And Dow Treasuries and payroll operations teams can eventually use DBRs as a way to utilize dormant governance tokens as collateral while maintaining voting power or to borrow DOLA to fund operational expenses like payroll or liquidity mining. Now that we've looked at Inverse's answer to variable interest rate volatility, let's look at another big DeFi lending challenge, cross-collateral lending pools. Most existing DeFi lending protocols use a cross-collateral pool architecture, where all token deposits like RAP, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Uniswap, Chainlink, stablecoins, what, whatever, all get deposited into one big pool. This is convenient, but also puts all the borrowable assets at risk in case of a security breach or an economical exploit. So Inverse came up with an innovative solution to the problem of cross-collateral lending pools. It's called personal collateral escrows, or PCEs for short. Personal collateral escrows replace shared collateral pools by isolating each deposit. First, the deposit is isolated by username or wallet. And then the deposit is isolated by collateral name. This means that each user that uses Firm creates a unique escrow contract, one for every market that you can borrow from. And unlike conventional lending markets, PCEs don't allow for anyone to borrow deposited collateral. Only DOLA can be borrowed. Since users are borrowing from inverse finance DAO and not each other, this adds another layer of security. The user experience remains the same, but PCEs provide greater levels of protection against flash loan attacks. Inverse can also limit the amount of borrowable DOLA available per market, adding another layer of security. PCEs are extremely flexible and can enable custom lending policies for individual deposits. 
PCEs also allow for governance tokens to retain their voting power while in escrow. So for example, if you deposit a UNI token into Aave today, you lose the right to vote in Uniswap governance votes. With PCEs, you can use that UNI token as collateral, borrow against it, and retain your voting rights. So let's recap. Firm offers a smarter way to borrow using rights-based borrowing and manages collateral using a new collateral deposit format, personal collateral escrows. Thank you for watching. For more information, visit inverse.finance/docs or click on the link below to visit us on Discord.